Okay, hello everyone. I want to show the second order that I got from Ruli Knit and um, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible while still showing you as much as I can of the actual fibres and the yarn simply because it's it's just ridiculous how dark it's been these past few days. Um, I have, this is the best light. This room has the best light in the house right now. It's only about 2.33 p.m. and I'm still like, <laughs> I'm losing light fast. It is winter in Scotland. So we'll get into it. So I got, the first one is a DK rate one. I got another one of these. And this one is in a shade called Skiddo. Nep. It's quite an unusual name. But this is very much more like an oatmeal, a light oatmeal shade. Let's see if I can get. And the colour isn't uniform. It's what's called a heathered effect. So there is a bit of a very light beige, beigey grey. And some tones of warmth, like, I don't know, would that be a darker beige? And it's got a nep to it, so I don't know if you can see those bits. Now, this initially turned me off. This is the first um, item I've bought with a nep um, in it. There's a few other colours online. There's a khaki green uh, cone that I was really interested in that colour, but because of the nep, it's kind of kept me back. I just don't know how that would look in the end garment. I need to like um, Google that and see. But I thought, you know what, this is quite a nice shade. These are kind of the beige shades or like the neutrals I'd go for. And it's a bit different from, if you remember my previous one, Saddleworth Mist. Because when I put these together, this definitely looks like more of a grey now. I mean, it's, it's a, 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 a complicated grey. <laughs> it's got like... Um, you know, it's not like a pure, just a block grey colour, which is what's attracted me to it. I don't think I'd be attracted to just a, a like a block one shade grey, steel grey. I mean, I'm still, I like it when they're mixed. I really like it when grey's mixed with um, purple. And I'm not a purple person. <laughs> I do not, I don't have any purple garments and it's not a colour I go for. But grey with a, like a light, you know, like a lavenderish type purple is actually very nice. So this is what's attracted to me to that. That's the difference between them. I think that's quite handy if someone's um, choosing a neutral online and wants to know. And this is this is darker now. I thought this was a lot light um, compared to the colours uh, in my first order, which are all kind of d uh, darker greens um, and the harvest. But compared to this, this is, I would say, like a medium shade. And that is definitely a lighter shade. And that's the packet they come in, so that's a very good deal. I mean, even for the price, this is £15 for, um, so it's five of these. And they are DK weight, and each skein is 100 grams, that's 500 grams. And I believe, oh God, I don't know, I memorised this before coming. It's 50 grams per, I think it's 104 metres, which is DK weight. I'm learning about these weights. It's quite confusing because there's a lot of American terminology online as well, but I'm trying not to confuse um, the British and the American terminology But because uh, I buy obviously from UK shops so it's good to know the British terminology. Right, let's go to these hanks first. So I got these hanks again, the ones that we have to wind up and again a neutral shade. I wasn't too uh, uh, thinking about this, like you know, I wasn't too kind of oh my god this is an amazing shade um, when I bought it, it was simply to buy a neutral background colour if I need something, um, maybe for like edging, um, <laughs> when I learn all this stuff. Like I said, I'm a very new knitter, I barely know how to knit the garter stitch. But I really like this shade and I don't go for pinks. Again, it's, um, it's a very delicate shade. It's one of those shades that you'd make a lace shawl in, you know, and it's so, so pretty. And I think the, the shade I got, this is, again, uh, this shade is gorgeous, actually. Uh, not what I usually go for, but I do have garments in this shade, so I know I do like it. And um, look at these two shades together. Wouldn't that look nice in some kind of colour work? Like a, uh, 
a two color color work piece I think that's beautiful and this uh, shade is called shell and it's a 200 gram hank and the 200 grams have uh, their four ply so all these uh, like you know, the British 100 gram cones and these are four ply and I can't remember what it is a per metrage per 100 grams but I know that the 200 grams has about 900 and something meters 904 I can't remember um like I said I'm trying to do this quick <laughs> but um yeah so beautiful shade and absolutely gorgeous shade this is called burgundy and I do think I saw a 500 gram cone of this but it got sold out absolutely gorgeous shade I could see a shawl on that as well okay so I'll go on to the cones and I'll start with this cone <laughs> so this is becoming this is becoming um, this color I know is probably going to be something that I'm going to start adding into my wardrobe because I am so drawn to this uh, shade. This is called Rustan and this is an iron weight, um, yeah, iron weight um, uh, a yarn. And I believe iron weight is slightly heavier than the DK weight, so this would knit up quicker. Into yeah, look at the size of the yeah, that's quite thick. Not as thick as the bulky ones I've got from um, Hobbycraft, but yeah. And this shade is just tan. I'm going to take this, um, let's take this off because it's, I saw from the previous video it's probably better if I had taken off the labels. So let's get close. Do you know the last one I got, Cinnamon Brown? I believe that had a lot more kind of heathering and nuance and it was a much more deeper shade in terms of um, complexity of colours. This is more of a block shade, but the shade itself is so nice, I don't mind, honestly. It is... See, the light's going so fast, I need to go through this quick. I try not to edit my videos, just do a one take. But, yeah. So that's Rust Tan, Iron Weight. <sighs> Can't remember the metrage, sorry. Now, this is the first of the... 500 gram skeins that I've got. It's called cream and um, very again a very basic neutral shade. Anything for the background for edging. I believe people can dye this as well but and I might do that because I love dyeing stuff. I, I make soap so I've got a lot of natural um, you know the natural dye stuff because um, I like using natural dyes in my soap but this is cream. Again, quite a block shade. There's not really much more than just a cream shade. Let's get closer. Yep. Lovely shade. Now, let's stick with the 500 grams British wool cones first. So, this is something. Let me put these back. Uh, this is something I showed last time. This is the dark grey natural. They sent the third one because the chestnut brown was out of stock. But I'm not complaining. This is beautiful. I mean, I really do like the chestnut brown. So I'm probably going to buy that in the future. Um, but this is beautiful. The more I look at this, the more glad I am. Um, because um, I could do have a third order coming from doing it. Um, so... And in that, I believe I have bought this in a DK weight. I think it is. I'll have to look at that order. I mean, I'll show it when it comes. But I am so happy. This is such a a basic... Like, this would be one of the basic shades. Like, you know, the main shades in my wardrobe, I think. Some of these are just, like, complementary. But this is a basic shade. It is a beautiful dark grey. It's focusing more on my bed sheet. This is like the guest room which has the best light because it's, it's not a big room but it's got a massive window in it and the window is like almost southwest facing so it's going to have the most light until the longest and it's a one floor up as well so there's no buildings obscuring the sun which isn't out today <laughs> but yeah beautiful I love this just so glad I've got quite a bit of it um what else is a 500 gram cone okay so there's this? No, that's a merino cone. 
Okay, so this is the I mentioned I got the sage. Um, do you know what I should have brought the summer storm? Ugh, to compare it with, it's such a similar shade to summer storm. I might add in a little bit of a, a like a video just comparing these two towards the end, but it's got less nuance than the summer storm, like in terms of heathering of different colours. It's more of a block. Like if you look at it, it's more of a block, one colour shade. But it is stunning. It's a stunning shade. Sage green. I mean, I knew I was into duck egg blue. I bought a rug that was duck egg blue. And um, so I knew I was into that this past maybe three, four years. I've been like veering towards that shade. But sage green is something that I didn't realise I liked so much. And I like it in knitted garments. I've seen some knitted garments online and I like the shade in that. Beautiful. Okay, so, and, okay, one more 500 gram. Let me get the, let me get the band off it. So this is, uh, I wasn't sure about this online. I don't know, I wasn't sure about this kind of tweeding effect. It's a shade called Finland Tweed. And it's a type of mid-brown, I would say, with a lighter beige. And it's got a mottled, well, I suppose it's a tweed effect. I love tweed fiber. I don't know if I mentioned that before in my previous videos. I love tweed wool fabric. Um, it's one of my favourite fabrics, but again, I've noticed that what I like in fabric doesn't really translate into yarn, and, but now that I have it, I really like the look of these two shades together. Do you know when you kind of squint your eyes and try to see what it would look like? I, <laughs> I think that's a nice shade, it's a nice basic shade to have. Um, I am very curious to see how this knits up though. Um, you know, like in a garter stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna get this wool nylon thing out of the way. Um, I don't regret buying this, but I kind of realised that it was maybe premature. I don't think I'll be into socks for a while. I know it's something that I'd want to do in the future, but socks needs its own set of little kind of needles, um, their own cables. Or um, I think you can do them on DPNs, and I don't like if you've seen the set of needles I bought. I don't think I can do them on that. Um, the I've also realised that um, the cable that I've got with the longer needles is the minimum it goes to is 60 centimeters, and for a lot of these things we need um, uh, yeah you need 40 centimeters for something like leg warmers or um, a beanie or a hat, and you need something like 23 centimeters I believe it is for socks the the cables that is and the needles corresponding to it need to be smaller so but yeah so I didn't know all this and I've tried to make a beanie on a bigger and oh my god it was just a headache I'll talk about it in a future video because that almost <laughs> uh, killed me in terms of like just my motivation for all this but this is um, real nylon this is I believe only 10% nylon at um, ninety percent merino. Merino is quite because I've I've got I still got to show you the merino cones I've got here. Merino is soft, but this doesn't seem as soft. I can't believe that this ten percent of nylon has made it so. Um, it's got a sturdiness to it, which I suppose is what you want in a sock yarn. This is a really nice shade, though. This is probably the best shade online, apart from there was a the one called Top Brown, which is quite nice as well. In terms of what I would choose to wear, like you know, for socks, and they actually have really nice knitted socks that you can purchase, which I'm having a look at actually, because <laughs> um, you just get to appreciate how much um, difficult it is, you know, you know, to make knitted hand knitted garments, and then after you've realised that, you don't mind paying, like I think it's fifteen pound for a pair of socks, but if you get two now, it's like. Uh, 20 pounds that's something I'd pay now just after I've realized how you know how difficult it is okay let me get these um, let me just get these bands off before I show you okay so this is 
bronze brown and look at that shade with the uh, yep it's a bit darker than the aran uh, rustan but this is 500 grams of merino wool in the shade bronze brown yep beautiful absolutely beautiful i don't know if i like this more than the cinnamon brown though uh, like i said it's a block shade it's not got any kind of yeah it's not got any heathering in it but again, I love the shade, so I don't mind. I have noticed though that I do go for, I do like the heathered shades. Um, I think they're also called melange, um, melange shades or mixed shades. I love those shades. I mean, they are definitely my go-to, but when you've got a beautiful shade like this bronze brown or this kind of sage green, or even that rust tan, you know, you don't mind. I don't mind, I'd buy them. Okay, and this next shade is something called Trigo Cream. And again, it's just those base shades that I like that are, you know, the kind of classic cardigans that you'd also, you always like, or, or the classic kind of jumper that you'd always reach for. This is definitely heathered. I'm so sorry about the light, it's getting so dark in this room. I really, really hope it shows up in the camera. But this reminds me of coffee shades. It's called Trigo Cream, which T-R-I-G-O. I hope I pronounce it right. I don't know what that refers to. Um, but this to me is a coffee, that, like, you know that kind of latte, coffee latte kind of shade? Coffee latte. And it's got, it's, it's a beautiful shade. I love coffee shades. I love earthy shades. Um... I don't know what that is. Is that part of the wheel? That's weird. There's something stuck on this. Okay. Right. I don't know if that's part of the wheel. If that's just a hair that's stuck. Hold on. Come on. What is this? I don't want it to be part of my video. But anyway, okay, so that is what this is. Gorgeous shade. Right, and the last shade, oh, let me get this. This is uh, the 500 gram Merino wool cone. This is the last one, and this is called Rioja. I think it's pronounced Rioja wine. It's uh, R I O G A. Again, an absolutely stunning shade. There is a slight heathered effect on this. But if you look at this, I thought these were almost exactly the same. And they kind of are. Like, the, I could probably, like, inter... Like, you know, use both of these. There's a slight richness to this, like, in terms of the actual shade. But there's more kind of complexity to this. I believe that... The, that wine burgundy shade has got like a bit of darker, uh, darker um, areas, darker heathering, which makes this absolutely gorgeous. So, so nice. I think having even a, a full garment in this shade would be absolutely stunning. So, yep, let's get these all together. So I'm just going to make a video on this side because so, we'll start from here. So this is my burgundy hank, the shell hanks. Need to make these into balls before I can work from them. This is the bronze brown, the Finland tweed, cream, the dark grey natural, the Rioja, Rioja wine, the Skido Nep. Yep, that's a skid on it. That is the lovely sage green. The aranweed rust tan. The wool nylon cone in minx. And the merino cone in trigo cream. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful. And thank you very much for watching.
but uh, yeah. Okay, hello everybody, and this is a quick comparison between Sage Green, uh, the 500 gram British wool cone from Woolinet, and the Summer Storm. Because I mentioned in my previous video, or the video that's just, I'm going to attach this video to the end of that one, I think, um, that this one was quite similar. Um, and and by that I mean they're in the kind of same schnot. They're not the same, but they have that kind of same light, um, I would say delicate tone quality. These colours, duck egg blue, sage green, they're kind of like in that family of nice delicate greeny blues. But they are not the same. And they are not the same if you are, you know, wanting to purchase these. There is a difference. And side by side, that's I think that's the only way people um they can convey it best basically and people can see. But this is definitely a sage green. It is more uniform in colour, it's more of a block colour, less it doesn't have um heathering in it. It doesn't have that, I think it's called melange or heathering, um, that which gives like, um, which I like, I do like that, I like it, I think it gives complexity. I like the look of it, but this colour is so beautiful that it's still an option, like for me definitely in my wardrobe. Right, and then this is Summer Storm. Definitely much more blue. It's probably on the darker um, range of duck egg blue. It's not as light because I was. I think it's because I was when I was comparing it in my first video. It was with darker shades like cinnamon brown and the dark uh, grey natural. So this seemed quite light to me. But when I'm comparing it with sage green, this shade of duck egg blue is a wee bit more richer than quite a lot of duck egg blues I've seen in other textiles. Um, like, for example, my rug is duck egg blue, but it's a very light, on the on the verge of an ice blue. And this is not a block shade. Like, honestly, this is very, very beautiful. It has bits of... Let me see if I can zoom in and if that focuses better. Yeah, so you've got that, the dark duck egg blue slash turquoise, I don't know, it'd be different things to different people I think, and then you've got the heathering of, I think it's a light, maybe silvery grey, yeah, it's a light silvery grey. And I think it's just those two shades. And because it's like a deeper, a deeper duck egg, with combined with a light silvery grey, the overall appearance is a much more lighter duck egg blue. To me, so that's the kind of impression I get. And then that's a sage green. They're both gorgeous colours, honestly I wouldn't know if I was to choose between them and luckily I don't have to, <laughs> uh, so I got both but if I was to choose between them, I, I don't know I think there's a lot of um, shades you can combine this with because there's lots of them, um, there's a, a shade in Kid Silk, Drops Kid Silk and Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk, that's Sage Green I believe or is it just in Kid Silk? There's something in brushed alpaca silk that's quite similar to this as well that you could combine. But I think you could probably easily combine that with this as well. There is steel blue in brushed alpaca that's always out of stock <laughs> that I think would be quite nice with uh, combined with this. And by the way, you have to combine something with this. Like, I don't know how knitters can get something, uh, knits with something so thin. Um, maybe that comes with experience, but I have tried to do that and I just got nowhere. I couldn't, I couldn't see. Like I am, 
I do have eyesight problems. I am partially sighted sometimes. I have a flare up in my eye of a condition, but I might talk about that more later, but um, yeah, it's difficult to see this. It's probably better getting, um, if you're a beginner anyway, maybe a DK weight or maybe like holding these two together. That is quite thin. But yeah, so the, I won't talk about that because this is just a shade comparison. But yeah, I hope that is helpful. Thank you very much.